Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we got in another Chromebook Plus to take a look at. This one from Asus. This is the Chromebook Plus CX34. It's got a 14-inch display on board, and it's a pretty nice mid-range Chrome OS device. And what Google has done is they've created a new hardware specification called Chromebook Plus that delivers mid-range performance. So whenever you see a Chromebook Plus, you're going to get a little more out of this than you will out of an entry-level Chromebook. And there will be a number of new features that they're adding to the operating system, including a lot of generative AI stuff that won't be available on the lower-end devices. And we did a whole video covering what some of those features are. Right now, there's not much here that separates things beyond the performance of the unit, but over time, I think they will add some more to the mix. And what we're going to do today, though, is take a look at this Chromebook Plus and see how it performs. And before we get into things, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from ASUS. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook Plus is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $399, but I would suggest you shop around a little bit because last week I saw a short-term promotion at Target where this was selling for $279. So if you shop around, you might be able to get a better deal. Now, this is the entry-level configuration that has an i3-1215U processor on board. That is a 12th generation Intel chip. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It actually has a very nice 14-inch IPS display. It's got a matte finish on it. The viewing angles are pretty nice. It doesn't do any touch or anything, but the display, I think, looks very, very good for a lower-cost laptop. It runs at 250 nits of brightness. It is a 1080p display, so it's full HD. And everything that I played back on it from a video perspective looked great, along with websites and other things. So I was very pleased with the overall display quality. It is not a display for creative professionals. It only covers about 45% of the NTSC color gamut. But for what it is, I think it is very good especially for what they're asking for on this one. Now, the weight on this one comes in at 3.14 pounds or 1.44 kilograms. It is completely made out of plastic, although they did harden up the top of the display lid a little bit more than the bottom. It looks pretty nice here. This is the pearl white color. And although it's hard to see on camera, it has a nice little speckle in the finish here, which I think looks very nice. The display will fold all the way down to your desk, but this is not a two-in-one. They do make a two-in-one variant on their Chromebook lines that works with pens and other things, but this one is mostly a laptop. What is nice about it, though, is the keyboard feels really good here. So the keys are nice and large. They're well-spaced. This does, of course, follow the Chrome OS layout. The keys are also backlit, which is not always something you see on a lower-end laptop. It is a single color backlight. Unfortunately, what happens when you're looking at the backlit keyboard when you're in good light is that the key caps get kind of washed out. So it's sometimes hard to see the letters on the keys when the backlight turns on, but you can also just turn the backlight off if you want. The trackpad here also feels pretty good for a lower end device. And overall, I think if you're looking to buy something just to do basic web browsing and document editing or something, this is going to do the job quite well. As for ports, you've got a lot of them on this one. On the left-hand side here, you've got a USB Type-C port. This is USB 3.2 Gen 1, but it is full service. So it'll take power in. It will also send display out and, of course, do data devices back and forth. Gen 1 means that this is running at 5 gigabits per second versus 10 that we typically see on the higher-end units. But I think for a Chromebook, it's perfectly fine. And you could also use this with a docking station if you want. On the other side, there's many more ports here, including a headphone microphone jack. You have two USB-A ports for plugging in keyboards and mice and that sort of thing. Here you've got an HDMI output. This is an HDMI 1.4 output, so it won't do 4K 60 hertz. But you can, of course, hook up a display adapter to the USB Type-C ports here and be able to get a better output option. And this USB-C port on this side is configured identically to the other one, so you can plug power into either side and get video out of either side as well. 
Now, all Chromebook Plus devices need to have a 1080p webcam in order to be compliant, and this one, of course, has it right here at the top. It also has a manual shutter that you can use to cover the lens when it's not in use. Now, one of the neat things about Chromebook Plus is that they have an operating system level image enhancement feature, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So this is the normal image, but I can also add blurring. And again, this is at the operating system level, and I can also adjust lighting here as well with some of the lighting enhancements. And because this operates at the operating system level, all of these enhancements can be used with any application that uses the webcam. So if you're using Zoom or Google Meet or anything else, whatever you set at the operating system level on a Chromebook Plus will work with those applications. But a pretty nice webcam here for the price point. Now, as nice as the camera is, it does not, though, support facial recognition for unlocking the computer quickly, nor is there any kind of fingerprint reader on board. The speakers are on the bottom and they are essentially downward firing. They're not the best sounding speakers out there, but you do get decent stereo separation. They don't sound as tinny as some of the other laptops in its price point do, but don't expect a lot out of them, especially for music listening. I do think they're fine for web conferencing, but of course you can connect headphones to the headphone jack or use Bluetooth headphones if you want. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, it'll vary based on what you're doing with the Chromebook. If you're doing basic stuff like web browsing and watching some videos, I think you'll get about eight hours out of the battery. But if you are taxing the system a little bit more with games and some of the other things you can do with Chrome OS these days, that of course will eat into the battery more significantly. But overall, it does meet the Chromebook Plus requirement for battery life. And I think you could probably get through most, if not all of the workday sticking to the basics. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll start off with the basics, some web browsing and work our way from there. So we'll take a look here at the nasa.gov homepage. And of course, I can't scroll with my fingers as it does not have a touch display, but the trackpad works just well enough here. And as you can see, things spring up very, very quickly here. The laptop is equipped with Wi-Fi 6. So if you have a newer router in your home, you'll be able to take full advantage of that. And across the board here, everything feels very snappy and responsive as you would expect. A little bit earlier, we took a look at YouTube. And as you can see, we were running a 1080p 60 frames per second video from my YouTube channel. I did not experience any drop frames and all was good on the video playback front. So I think if you are looking to play back some media on here, everything is going to run just fine. And on the browserbench.org spinometer benchmark test, we got a score of 275. That puts this one right in line with what we saw out of Lenovo's Chromebook Plus, the IdeaPad 3i that we looked at about two weeks ago. So all is good on the performance front. Now, whenever I get to this point in a Chromebook review, I like to remind people that the way Chrome OS handles some of the popular streaming services can be a bit confusing. So many Chromebooks will often have in their program menu here, a link to Netflix or Disney Plus or Prime Video. When you click on these, what happens is it loads up an Android version of, in this case, the Disney Plus app. And although it's nice because it kind of works the same way it does on your phone or on your TV box, the problem is, is that the way Android apps work on Chrome OS is that the video from these streaming services that has digital rights management attached to them runs at DVD resolution, not at the 1080p resolution that this laptop is capable of. So your streaming services are just not gonna look all that great if you click on the icon to load up the app. So what I would suggest you do for the best visual quality is to use the web browser to look at those services like Netflix or Disney Plus and others, because off the web browser, you can get the full resolution of the display. This is fixable, it's not a hardware problem, but the uh, digital rights management for Android on Chrome OS still has not been updated. I have to talk about this every time I do a review, but it's important to know. So just keep that in mind. Use the browser to watch your favorite services. But other Android apps actually work pretty nicely on here. So this is the Android version of Roblox, playing one of my kids' favorite places to visit in Roblox, which is YouTuber Cookie Swirl C's world here. And as you can see, things actually are performing pretty well. A little lag hit every once in a while. Uh, but for the most part, it is a fairly decent Roblox experience here. The game controller works with it also. And if you were looking for some cheap way to play Minecraft or Roblox, at least the Android versions of those apps 
this might be one way to do it. Additionally, you will find the Google Play Store on your Chromebook where you can download other applications. You will likely find that apps you might have purchased on a tablet or a phone will be available here. Not all these apps translate very well to the laptop interface because many rely upon touch controls versus a trackpad or game controller, but you will find quite a bit here that will run on the Chromebook. And these Android apps will run right alongside your web browser in a separate window. So you can have a couple of Android things going, you can have some Linux stuff, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, and a few other things too. And on the 3 d Mark Wildlife Benchmark test, we got a score of 7,218 on the regular version of that test and 1,765 on version two of that test. It's pretty much right in line with what we saw out of Lenovo's Chromebook Plus that we looked at a couple of weeks ago, but you will see it is behind some Chromebooks with more powerful processors like the Framework Chromebook. And this is really not something that I'm going to recommend for gamers because of the limited amount of RAM and storage and processing power. But there are some ways that I think you can really enjoy some top tier games and that is through game streaming. So for example, I have a uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate account here. And what I'm playing right now is Starfield, which will never be able to run on this hardware. It doesn't even have enough storage for the game, let alone the processing power. But because I'm streaming this from Microsoft's cloud servers, I can play the game here on my Chromebook. And one of the nice features about the Microsoft service is that if you have this game on your Xbox, you can then start streaming it on the Chromebook and pick up right where you left off. It'll keep the save game file in sync between the different devices. So that's probably the best way to enjoy AAA games on this Chromebook. I think we will start seeing more Chromebooks with more processing power that can handle this kind of thing because Steam is actually coming to Chrome OS. Uh, but this particular model, I would not recommend for any kind of hardcore gaming unless you are streaming from a cloud service. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux support. All Chromebooks now allow you to get this very nice command window where you can activate all sorts of fun open source applications. This is my favorite text editor called Nano, but you can also run graphical applications. So for example, this is the LibreOffice spreadsheet. This is a free open source office suite that has a spreadsheet, a word processor, and a bunch of other similar applications. And what's nice about this is that this is not running in the cloud somewhere. It is running locally on this computer. And when I save a file, it stays on the computer. So if you want some old school uh, office editing here, you can get LibreOffice installed pretty easily. This is a very active community that is developing this application. And there are many, many other active open source communities developing all sorts of great software that you can install on here for free and have it run alongside your Android apps and your Chrome OS web browser. And what's nice about how Linux is implemented here is that you really can't break the computer by playing around with the command line. If you somehow break your installation, you can just reset it and go back to the beginning with it and the rest of the system is isolated from what happens inside of your command line here. So it's a great way, I think, to learn how Linux works in a way that won't result in your computer malfunctioning if you happen to do the wrong thing. And that's often the best way to learn. So overall, I think this is a very solid Chromebook here. I think the price is very reasonable for what you get. The i3 processor here performs adequately for what you might want to do uh, with this particular Chromebook. I really like the 1080p display. I like the matte finish on it. It's got a decent webcam. Battery life is decent enough. And I think if you were looking for a very reasonably priced laptop that can do everything that you wanna do as far as doing the basics are concerned, this is definitely something worth considering. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.